I, I still very much believe that if there is anyone who can break out on this Titans defense this year and have, you know, an all pro caliber season, I really do think it is Roger McCreary. Welcome into the Hot Read Podcast for Friday, July the 26th. I'm your host, Easton Freeze, director of published content here at BroadwaySportsMedia.com. We're also brought to you by the 440 Podcast Network. You can follow me on social media at Easton Freeze. I am joined once again by producer JT. JT, uh, thank you for, at the last minute, taking over the reins of the ship on our Tuesday show. If you missed on Tuesday, it was the JT and Stoney show. A combination that the masses, frankly, have been clamoring for for as many as weeks, maybe even months. Uh, and we finally gave it to the people, courtesy of uh, my wife going into labor. How are you? I'm good. I was going to say, I've had a really productive week. It's been a very good week at Titans training camp. No idea where you've been, you know. I, I think you... I have not been productive. My wife was productive, and I've <laughs> yes, just sat right? around. I think I think quite just, literally uh... productive. She created another person, be <laughs> like a new human just dropped. Well, that's that's uh, a good one. Um, yeah. No, but yeah, it's been an exciting week of Titans football, and I know we were talking before the show. Even though you haven't been productive, you really have been kind of off the grid I, it feels like for the past couple of days dealing with with the birth of your child and so it's we were talking about people have seen or heard from me during titans see like during the on in season portion of things uh in a long like maybe ever since i've been doing this um so maybe it was a nice respite of just not having to listen to easton talk um i've not been super productive but i have been awake more than any of you i guarantee that i've been i've been up while you folks have been sleeping, uh, I just haven't been doing anything. I've just been up dreading the fact that I was up. Um, I'm very tired. So you're telling me you had a, a, the most amount of time to kind of finally sit down and look through the analytics and, do important and, things and, and, and figure out nope. Jack if Jack Gibbons or Kenneth Murray or any of these guys are going <laughs> right. to be the number one. You could have done that, but instead right. uh, you, you were awaiting the birth of your child. No, but uh, this is going to be a good show today, I think. We, we got a lot of show and tell. You were telling me that being off the grid has kind of left you, you know, kind of alienated from the ongoings of practice the last two days. So I'm excited to uh, fill you back in and fill Gun in the to my head right now. I couldn't tell you one significant, like the most significant thing that's happened the last two days that I could tell you happened was that DeAndre Hopkins quote that we'll get to, I'm sure, later in the show where he talked about how happy he is in Nashville. Other than that, I couldn't tell you a thing. I, I know that Tuesday the offense wasn't very good. And then today it was better. That's the extent of my knowledge. I again, I've not been, I've never been so uninformed on what has been going on. Not only was I not there, I've not been paying attention. I've been, I've been doing other more important things. But you know what? A lot of people take paternity leaves. They disappear. You know, they take the the month off for the podcast. My child is not yet thirty six hours old, and I, that's not true. She's not yet forty eight hours old, and I am here, uh, and I am tired. But I am back for you people, and there will be no break. I, I won't be out there as much, but I will be here on the show. And between JT and I, we will have you at least single covered, at times double covered, at Titans Camp all August long. So excited about that. Yeah, we uh, we went to the press conference on Tuesday. The, I was going to be on the show on Tuesday. We, we didn't advertise the, the Stoney and JT show because it wasn't going to be the Stoney and JT show until about 3 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon. And I was talking to Braden Gall and, and Austin Stanley walking out of the Titans facility um from the the two was it tuesday yeah two no monday tuesday 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 press conference i've lost my track of days on the tuesday press conference and they're asking me about the baby and you know my wife and how she's doing and i, I just the last thing i said was i just wish she would come already like if the baby would just get here that'd be nice so i could like get on with my life and do things um because you like when you're waiting on a baby you can't go anywhere you, like, you can't do stuff can't schedule things because you don't know when the baby's gonna come and I said that to them, and then I got in the car and I got a call from my wife no more than five minutes later. She's like, I think we need to go to the hospital. And then we did. I didn't go home. I went to the hospital in what I wore to the Titans facility, and then we had a baby at 1.15 in the morning. So that was exciting. Um, you, me, you, me and you and some friends of ours in a fantasy chat, as soon as you guys found out, you immediately, like the degenerates you are, started betting on what time she'd be here, started laying lines. Um, disgusting, and I, I love that for you guys. Um, but no, she's great. Mom's great. Baby's great. They're downstairs hanging out. We just got home a couple hours ago from the hospital. And uh, so we're back. So that's, that's that. And if you want to see a picture of her, she's on my Instagram or my, my Twitter feed. So she's, she's frankly, she's the most adorable baby. I think currently doing the thing. So 
I'm a bit of a biased source, but I've I've run I've, I've I hired a third party research firm and they have, in fact, confirmed she is the cutest child in the game at the moment. So you don't want to miss that picture. OK, JT, today's going to be like a normal training camp video, except the opposite, sort of. It's going to be all of the things you're used to hearing, but not from my mouth. It's going to be from JT's mouth, because while I've been playing Goo Goo Gaga for the last 48 hours, JT has been. Uh, on the grind, on the beat, at Titans practice. The only here's another thing that's kind of wild, by the way, JT. I think today and yesterday were the only two closed practices the Titans are having. Is that correct? Did I hear that yeah. right? I, I believe so. That's to at least to my the extent of my knowledge. Those are the only two that will be closed. We we have practice on Saturday at Nissan that is open to fans for their right. welcome back weekend, um, and then. I think the rest of the practices, even all know, the ones all the at, the, at St. Thomas are going to be open yeah, to yeah, at least some I, fans. I, I believe all the way up and through the Seattle joint practices are open to the public. And that was with that, that link for people to sign up right. and get tickets first come first serve. So if I you believe... had told me that last year that that was going to be the case, I would, I would have responded. So how did Mike Rebel get fired? Because that doesn't, that doesn't track. That is, that is f fantastic for fans. That's very good and cool. Um, but yeah, so. Um, we're going to be talking about the things that happened the last two days. And I'm reliably informed by JT that there are in fact, interesting things to discuss. You heard from some interesting people. You saw some interesting things. So I'm basically just going to be interrogating you and you're going to be showing off all the clips that you got on today's show. And I'm going to ask the dumb man questions before we get to a rundown from the first two days of training camp, though, a couple of housekeeping things. Um, first of all, if you're with us live on a Thursday afternoon, we appreciate you being here. And we, uh, we thank you for your patronage of the Hot Read Podcast. Today of all days, we need your help. Uh, we often ask for you to like and subscribe, which you should do in case you haven't already. Go and do that right now. Head on over to Broadway Sports Media's YouTube page. Find this live stream on the Broadway Sports Media YouTube page. Click in. Join the comment section where Henry and Sobro, uh, Stony, excuse me, uh, and Glory Day Sports are all hanging out with us. Want to hear your thoughts and comments on the beginning of Titans training camp over there in the chat. And... We're going to have in the in the link to this podcast. And if you're watching live, JT, we'll we'll try to get this in the uh, the the Twitter threads as well as the YouTube description of this live stream. We here at the 440 Podcast Network have a special survey going on right now. It is uh, something we put together with a research firm. It is for you all, the fans of any of the ten shows that we have here on the 440 podcast network whether it's here at the hot read podcast football and other f words a football show the gold standard uh vandy sports.com uh, for club and country uh, uh music city audible i'm sure i'm missing there's, there's too many paul podcasts karski podcast. paul, the paul karski podcasts thank you uh pod bless america we've got a, a a wide variety of podcasts here at the 440 podcast network in case you didn't know that there are others you should check them out as well and uh, if you listen to any of them, even sporadically, we would be super, super thankful if you would go and click that link. It's like a five minute survey. It's going to give us some information on our target audience demographics that are it really it's going to help us help you. It is going to allow us to produce the content that you guys want. Get rid of the fluff. Get rid of the stuff that you guys see on your feed and you you click past. You're like, I don't like when they do those episodes. It's going to be content refinement ultimately so if you take five minutes of your time to help us out with this one we appreciate you but two you're going to be getting a better podcast and video show product in return we need as many replies to this as possible we push it the next couple of days but it's not going to be going on forever it's going to be a pretty short run here so we need your replies very soon again those replies or excuse me the the link to uh, make those replies in the survey in the live stream comment sections or the threads on social media and then uh, also, if you're listening on uh, the podcast version of the show, the description of the podcast, you'll find that link right down there. Click in, help us out real quick. Uh, even pa pause the podcast real quick. Do that and then come on back. We'd appreciate you doing that. OK, JT, let's get to um, let's get to the Titans. And do we want to start with some news? Do you want to start with your most interesting topic? Where would you like to begin? Well, I think you said something really interesting to start off the show here, and it was along the lines of if that were to happen last year, you would have asked, is Mike Vrabel been fired? That wasn't mm -hmm. really the only thing that we saw from uh, from practice today or yesterday um, talking about things that are totally different from years past, um, mm. as I quickly put uh, the link here for you to take that survey in both the Broadway and 440 YouTube channel. 
right okay, there. Great, so perfect. we'll put that in there real quick. But there's been a lot of things different in, in, in how they conduct themselves at training camp so far. Most notably today, when Brian Callahan comes out for his media availability, and the first thing he does is he says, first things first, let's get some transactions out of the way and give you injury updates on guys who are here at the facility, which I think a lot of us, as I think Paul Kaharski tweeted it out, now that the Titans media shock is over from <laughs> Brian Callahan actually breath. giving us uh, actually giving us information yeah. about certain injuries and, and not without having to ask. hiding it, just volunteered without it. having to ask, yeah. we volunteered it, and it wasn't behind this veil of That's shadows that the Mike Vrabel regime would have had it behind. I think that Space was something secrets. that was um, really interesting. So we'll get welcome, into those Jay. first, uh, exactly. But there were a bunch of. Uh, transactions that happened today. Two additions and one subtraction from the Titans roster today, most notably uh, the return of Corey Levin. Uh, welcome back as he oh, re-signs can't kill with the Titans. Guy. Corey uh, Levin and Two-Tone Blue can't kill I, him. I, I got, the, I got the, the sheet this morning with all the players and all the numbers, and all of a sudden I saw Corey Levin on there. And I thought it might I, have been an old copy. That, Is this and, updated? Are we sure about this? Yeah. I mean, it, it really was just a welcome surprise. I was like, what, is this Groundhog's Day? Are we, w w what's going on here? Um, but th besides the point, he's back. And that, I, I think, is an interesting conversation about what kind of leads to him being back. And then also they sign um, inside linebacker Shane Ray, a former first round pick from Denver and Brian Callahan had some thoughts on that as well. But with that, they did need to make some room for those two additions and uh, whether you are surprised or saw this coming, uh, the Titans release rookie running back undrafted free agent Dylan Johnson from uh, out of Washington. Wow. Uh, as you know, it, it was a bit of a shock for me, but um, as he was one of my favorite front runners to make this team because I thought he fit the, the role of what the Titans would want in a third running back or so. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, it's kind of had the writing on the wall a little bit as you've listened to the show the past couple of weeks, you know, through OTAs. Uh, his performance there kind of left us a little uninspired and it didn't seem like the, the coaches were too high on him. So uh, that means the the running back race is already getting kind of thin and it, we're looking to see who will take that third running back spot. I didn't think it was going to matter. I like, I, I'm pretty sure on the, my way too early 53 man roster, didn't I? I'm pretty sure I had him in. Like on the so. team, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so, I, I was, so you won't be per you're, you're, you're starting off 0 for right. 1. <laughs> so it's like they it's like the fourth second of the uh, the, the season here, and I'm already wrong, yeah, man. I'm surprised. I mean, you know what it means, it means welcome back to the Tennessee Titans, the nasty nut. He's gonna, it's he's in the well, he's in the driver's seat here. I yeah. and that's I'm sorry if that's a little bit um dismissive of Hassan Haskins, but I'm willing to be a little bit dismissive of Hassan Haskins until I see significantly better play from him as an actual runner. Um, if they choose him, it's it's going to be for the special teams, right? Because uh, besides his special teams prowess, which he is quite fantastic on special teams, what like why why would you make that decision exactly? I don't I don't know. Um, Levin is not surprising. I I think I mean it. I, I guess the takeaway JT is well, there's your backup center, right? We we were kind of talking about Daniel Brunskill playing there in the spring. He said it was out of necessity. Do they potentially see him there or not? And then I, I, you know, I, well, I was about to ask you, you can't actually reveal where, where he was playing on, on the air, but um, I, I'm assuming w was Levin out there practicing today or was he just signed today? He was out there today as well. Playing so, center, I'd imagine. I, I believe so. He was out there at least during the stretching period and with some of the individual drills for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, it, 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 you know, you talk about how Daniel Brunskill at OTS OTA said he was playing that more out of necessity. Now you mm -hmm. get to, not even the second day of practice, and they've brought re they brought back in a guy in Corey Levin who um, has been the backup center a, a couple times before, and so that uh, reinforces the idea that maybe Dan Daniel Brunskill is you know could he still be that that depth option for them behind Corey Levin now at center possibly, but that really just kind of makes this race for the right guard position. Uh, a lot more interesting crowded. now. Crowded, it's crowded, uh, man. It, it, it all of a sudden becomes crowded when you when you move Daniel Brunskill back over to that right guard only position. Now you have three guys in Sadiq Charles, um, Dylan Radens, and Daniel Brunskill, um, all fighting for that starting job. And now you you kind of think that one of those three may not even make the roster, despite the the, the depth you need. But 
Uh, now that that hole is kind of filled by Corey Levin, it, it makes me wonder uh, what is Daniel Brunskill's role on this team? Yeah, if you're going to have 10 linemen on the roster, which you know they could have 9, 10, 11, I'd be kind of surprised if they had big, like they kept 12 linemen. You can't, and five of them are starters, which means you got two tackles and three into your linemen. You can't, you can't have three or four backup guards. Like, you know, somebody, you got to have, you have some tackles in there, I promise. And you need at least one backup center. So somebody's not going to cut it unless they prove themselves to be capable of being a versatile enough player that they are comfortable taking them as a backup center guard or taking them as a backup guard tackle or a swing, a swing play. Like, I, yeah, I don't know. And then you mentioned that third signing in Shane Ray. Does that move you at all? I'm I'm completely unmoved by that decision. I, I'm not upset with it, you know, sharing the roster, whatever. But it's been, you know, it's go back to COVID and then go two years before that. That was the last time Shane Ray was playing meaningful football. That, you know, that's not necessarily, a, I, I'm not banking on Shane Ray making an impact for this team. Yeah, well, let's get to a couple of these clips because Brian Callahan some, had some things to say both about Shane Ray and then also um, okay. the we can talk about the the other things that, that Callahan had to announce here. First, let's talk about the, the surprise of Brian Callahan just giving us some of this information um, willingly today. Here's what he had to say at the beginning of his press conference. Today's transactions, uh, injury-wise, uh, Harold Landry is still uh, out. He's been sick, so it's just an illness. We'll have to work him back in um, as he gets healthy. You know, anybody who's been sick for a while knows he can't come out that quickly, so uh, he'll be working back. And then uh, Cheeto, Cheeto's going to be out for, for – he's going to miss some time with a calf injury, so uh, it'll be a couple of weeks probably uh, just so you see what uh, – he's out here, but he's not practicing. And so that was a lot of information as well. Big news there. First of all, Harold Landry, we kind of were wondering because he and Daniel Brunskill both were not out there yesterday. Um, and so we get a little bit more clarification that both Daniel Brunskill was both Daniel Brunskill and Harold Landry was sick. Uh, Brunskill was feeling good enough to come back out there today. Harold Landry, like you said, sounds like it took him a little bit longer than they have had, but sounds like he is not going to be and not out there for too much longer. And then the big one uh, is Cheeto Wuzier, the mm -hmm. one of their big free agent signings this off season to kind of take over that, that cornerback two role. Um, I, he, he has a, a lower body injury, the calf injury that uh, I guess must've popped up during practice yesterday because he was out there practicing with the team on day one. And it sounds like it, it you know, it's not just something that it, it's a, not a minor injury if he's going to be out for a couple of weeks here. And so that, that is kind of a, the first big blow, I think to this team uh, so far mm -hmm. in, in training camp. And it's going to leave the door open for some guys um, to get some work with, with the, the ones I, I think you're going to see a lot more upcoming from guys like the rookie and Jarvis Brownlee jr. Um, UDFA Gabe Judy Lally will probably get a lot more time here to prove himself. And then, um, whether we like it or not, I think Trey Avery is going to be getting some looks <laughs> out there. Um, because like we said, you know, um, the, the, the top three are, are really nice. It's a really nice group of cornerbacks, yep. but we've continued to talk about the depth and now a, a day and a half in and the depth is already being challenged here Time because Trey, up, brother. Trey Avery is probably going to get some reps here, uh, yep. throughout training camp while he is gone. So. That, I thought that was really interesting to see him announce that today. Just real quick, when he came into the podium and with, we just had a statement at the beginning and said all of that, did you guys have to stifle a round of applause? Like what, did, did, what, was, what was the sentiment in the room when, when that it had to have been a, a pleasant surprise? It, it, it was. And, and I do enjoy Brian Callahan's kind of he kind of gives a, a state of the union little address at the beginning. Uh, you, you know, um, even before this, at some of the OTAs, he kind of talks about how, how it was out there today. He was talking about how it was muggy and that's going to you know mm -hmm. bring some other challenges on. It, it's pretty interesting to see this guy kind of give a recap of practice before we get into the questions like here it. instead of just a Mike Vrabel gets up there and says, what do you guys want? And then we questions. All right, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, um, it was it's, a nice, it's a nice change of pace. And I think it also alleviated some of like it, it, the, the, to pull back the curtain and kind of hear the process. You know, he also went into, Hey, um, I know you guys probably didn't see us throwing a lot of deep balls today. That's by design. It was a lot of over the middle kind of, you know, five or eight yard out routes. Like th that's by design. We don't want to put too much tread on the tires too early here. Um, and so I think, 
Ryan Callahan, you know, it's a breath of fresh air. I think a lot of us were pretty stunned and surprised to see that. Um, a lot of us were, were looking around and we're like, is this actually happening? Like, what's going on? But it well, was, you know it was what a, it is, honestly. It's a pleasant surprise. It, it is a pleasant surprise, and it is a good thing for us in the media, It's it, which means if it's a good thing for the media, it's a good thing for the fans because the fans are getting more access. I will say, though, it's not just him being a good guy, and I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, attribute a, a malevolent uh, purpose to what he's doing. It's not, it's not this, but it is also very politically savvy for him to come out. Cause you just mentioned multiple things where instances where he's come out and said, Hey, you know, today, before you guys even ask, I know that we didn't throw the ball deep much. That was on purpose. That was the point of the practice today. Hey, by the way, I know you, I know you noticed these guys not out there today. Here's where they are, what's wrong with them and when they're going to be back. That's the kind of thing. It's it's like he is thinking. He turns his media brain on before he comes over and, and talks to us and and thinks, okay, what's going to be the clickbait title of the day, and how can I shut it down immediately? How can I how can I keep that smoke as low as possible? Because that's precisely the kind of thing that you would write about and hear about from a Titans practice in the past, um, because it wasn't addressed very clearly or very thoroughly, or was de- you know there was de- de- declining to comment on the topic. So it's politically savvy on his part. And I don't know if he's just, I, I I think he's just savvy enough and thinks that way. Now there's a chance that he just has like his people come over to him, Mr. President, they're going to ask you about uh, why you didn't throw the ball deep. They're already on Twitter talking about where the deep balls were today, Mr. President. Uh, maybe. I don't think so. I, th- I think he's, uh, I think he's just built like that, which is, is fantastic. I want to ask, a, I want to make a comment and ask a question about some of these guys. Um, you mentioned, Losing Chido Wuzier being the first kind of shoot a drop in the injury game. I am, if there was ever such thing as a good injury, which it's not, and I'm I'm not happy that he is hurt. I hope that he comes back sooner than the timeline that's laid out for him. I hope Cheeto's fine. I do think there are a couple of key positions on this team where we've talked, I mean, really wore out the topic of, wow, they're starters. Love that, but whew, it gets rough after that. We've talked about that all summer long. And if those position groups see maybe it's veteran rest days, or maybe it is some guys, some starters suffering injuries, that God forbid, but it's going to happen. It can be a blessing in disguise, I think, for us to find out a little sink or swim style trial by fire. Get these guys in there. You know, Gabe Judy Lolly, surprise, buddy. You're going to spend two weeks now running a lot more with the ones than you otherwise were. Hey, George Family Jr., we're not going to ease you in nearly as much now, buddy, because you're going to be in there getting the work against the big dogs. Like, let's see you guard DeAndre Hopkins. Let's let's see you press him off the line of scrimmage. That's the kind of thing that, and sometimes that can ruin a guy. Um, that sometimes, sometimes they sink, sometimes they swim. But if you can swim, man, and you're given the chance to swim early, that's a really good thing. And it, it can allow for this team to feel more confident about their depth, as well as fans to say, hey, we've got some diamonds in the rough here. We've got some guys that can actually play. Look at this guy, you know, in practice. I can't believe George Brownlee Jr. held Calvin Ridley to no catches today, uh, you know, in, in, in five matchups. That was really fantastic. Uh, he did a great job. I think this guy could potentially be a future starter on the cheap, and, and he's fantastic backup for us. So that's the kind of thing that from a media standpoint in camp, it's not always a bad thing. It's not a good thing by any means, but it's not always a bad thing necessarily for a starter to not be out there the entire time. Yeah, I, I think you hit the nail on the head right there. Guys that will... Um, try to have an opportunity to step up, mainly the first two, Gabe Judy Lolly and Jarvis Brownlee Jr. Kenneth uh, in the comments said, secretly hoping for Caleb Farley to sneak into mm-hmm. the rotation. I, I mean, it, the door isn't exactly open, but there are there's a there's a there's an opening now. And the door is a, a little bit more open than it was before, I think. Um, right. So anything is possible. Now I will say, uh, you know, Caleb Farley is the only person out there, and I think the only player in all of the, the NFL to be wearing sweatpants in the muggy heat out there today. That, he, uh, he only wears sweatpants, dude. I it, don't it, get it. I, I don't understand it either. I'm not built it, like that. I, I mean, him. it's it's an obser- <laughs> it's just an observation I thought I should share. Caleb Farley, there are two guys out there. Caleb Farley wearing sweatpants out in this like 85 degree, super humid heat. And then Leroy Watson, the sicko that he is wearing a sweatshirt underneath his, pa- uh, underneath uh. his practice jersey. Uh, like I was like, I'm not built like you guys. Uh, I was wearing, and he's a big boy. Was, like at least with, yeah. at least with a cornerback, you're like, well, you know, 0% body fat guy probably runs really cool. He's trying to keep those, those leg muscles warm. Mm-hmm. You're a big lineman. Like what are you, buddy? What are you doing? What are you doing? How is this yeah. not heat death? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, it was, it was impressive for him to, to be out there uh, with, with, with the guys today in that, in that, um, 
wearing what he was. But um, we can move on here now to uh, kind of coming full circle here to another thing that Brian Callahan had to say. Another guy who was also out there besides Corey Levin, Shane Ray, was also out there practicing today. Um, and, and Brian Callahan was asked about the addition of him, what he can bring to this team. And here's what he had to say on the matter. Shane played, played quite a bit of football. Uh, I actually was, was in Denver when Shane was drafted. It just turns out that way. Uh, so I've, I've, I've known Shane for a long time. And, you know, he came in, he, he performed well. And I think it's always impressive when veterans um, like him that have played enough football come into it at, at, at a mini camp tryout uh, and practice the rest of them, you know, and, and play hard and do all those things because they love playing football. So uh, excited to get Shane here. You know, we needed some guys to, to rotate in there. and the outside linebacker spot and they compete. So uh, we've got to play a little bit of football in the league. And I think you can help us. And so, yeah, I mean, th there was a clear connection here with it. Brian Callahan even saying that he was with the Denver Broncos when they drafted him all those years ago. I mean, he is he is a veterans veteran now in the league here. He's as Brian Callahan said, he's played a lot of football, but I think that they've obviously had their eye on on Shane Ray here as he was one of the guys who uh, had a mini camp tryout. Uh, with the team back in OTAs. Uh, so, you know, bringing him in, what does that do to the interior linebacking depth? I, I there's a, I have a lot of thoughts on this current linebacking group. I, I think um, through two days of practice, I'm still pretty uninspired by what I've seen. Um, I'm shocked. I can't but, believe, I can't believe that's uh, your pick. You know, obviously the, the, what, what I think this is signaling is that they also still don't really know exactly who is going to win that starting job? Get, bringing a guy in like Shane Ray, um, I think, is just another kind of position where they're going to rotate as many guys in and out, see as many combinations as they possibly can to find out what exactly works and, and how they can build a, a, a linebacking room that's just deep enough to, you know, get them survive. through the season and survive, <laughs> I think is the best way that you can say that. Yeah. Um, and so bringing a veteran in like Shane Ray, I think adds another uh, piece to the rotation that, you know, maybe they need uh, to at least survive their training camp. And then, you know, as we get to the season, a guy who may have a little bit more intuition and, and experience. I don't know, man. I don't mean to be a hater. I really don't. And I, I hope he's good for then uh, all of those things. The, this is just the latest example of the fact that draft pedigree follows you forever. And if you are highly drafted, it will allow you to work in the league for like a minimum of eight to 10 years, no matter how bad you are. Like you have to be Isaiah Wilson levels of natural disaster to not stick around. If you are a highly drafted guy that a, a serious number of scouts around the league fell in love with you as a prospect and they don't really pay attention to you once you get into the league. And then they say, Oh, he's a free agent. He's cheap. We can go and get him. I can fix him. I swear I can fix him. You never can fix him. I mean, was it over the weekend that we saw uh, from Packers training camp? We, or maybe early this week we saw from Packers training camp where, um, hang on, I'm gonna find the, yeah. Andy Herman said, um, Andre Dillard. Remember that guy? Andre Dillard has no shot blocking Rashawn Gary, just a massive mismatch. Gary with another sack. And Rashawn Gary follows it up with another sack. Just unstoppable. Um, I responded with the Batman meme where it's like, does he know? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I hope it, Packers it, fans don't real, don't, don't take this as, wow, this Rashawn Gary cat is good. And don't get me wrong. Rashawn Gary, very good football player. This is not a reflection on Rashawn Gary, my friends. This is, a, this, is, this is the man that Andre Dillard would, would collect 19 sacks a day against throughout uh, the August period of last year's training camp. I, it's, but you know what? Andre Dillard, first round pick. Oh, oh, that college tape. You watch that college tape. There's a good player in there. It's got to get him out of there. Coach, I can coach this guy up. And so we were talking about that. We were talking about that, you know, the Andre Dillard thing. And then the replies to that tweet as well that said with, with screenshots of like the, the Rashawn Gary uh, sack line over under 10 and a half. And it's like, do I place this? And I was like, no, over. do not <laughs> do, do that. Do, do not do that. It's a trap. Um, it's a so trap. We were, we, we were talking about that at training camp, which, but you are right. Maybe Andre this, Dillard, is he an industry plant for, for the Vegas? Maybe he's an industry plant and he's just a, he's a Mark. That would explain so much. Actually it would, but um, anyway, sorry, no. continue. I was just gonna say, I mean, that is very possible. Uh, but Shane Ray, I guess you know, you are right to the extent that you know he he is getting a shot because of of that of that pedestal, that first round pick pedestal that he is on. Um, but 
you know, it is a guy that, you know, to Brian Callahan's credit, he's familiar with. And I think that also uh, says quite a bit about that as well. So we'll have to see how, how he performs both in the preseason and how this entire linebacking room shakes out. Um, we can move on now to, uh, unless you had something else to say. Well, I was just going to say, I can't believe we made it 30 minutes into this show and have not talked about Devondre Sweat. I'm assuming he's going to be a topic eventually. Oh, so the, next up, we're going to talk about Devondre Sweat here. Fantastic. The next clip. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm glad that was in your plans. We're, we're yes. on the same wavelength. Yeah, perfect. So, yeah, I've had people ask me about Devondre Sweat texting me that don't realize I was having a kid. They're like, how's you look? Start practice. And I was like, I don't know. Go go ask somebody else. Uh, so, <laughs> JT, how, JT, how was Devondre Sweat? What's he look like? He was out there, I assume. Devondre Sweat has been out there okay. both days. Devondre Sweat is here. He is out there. Um, and I've had a couple people also ask me how Tavondre Sweat wor- looks. And I, uh, the thing I coming back to saying every single time is that he looks as advertised. Tavondre Sweat mm. is probably the biggest dude out there amongst everyone. And, you know, when you're watching him in these drills with the other defensive linemen and in the seven on sevens or, or in the 11 on 11s and things like that, um, He's a guy that that is not going to win with with the with the bend or the quick agility, but there's no reason for this man to be as big as he is and run and be as fast as he is. I, I'm like th- right. this this guy. I, I I no longer feel bad that Tavondre Sweat could probably beat me in a in a. I was going to ask, are you certain you could beat him in any distance foot race? Because I don't think I I don't think I can. Watching him again and just up close and personal, this dude, I think I'd have I think a chance, but I'm not. I think like, I'd have a oh, chance. Oh yeah, I could beat yeah. that guy. No, no I, the, I don't the, think that freak of nature with with the way that he is able to um, accelerate and get up to his top speed that he probably he's got a shouldn't be able to get there. to. The low end torque exactly. is outrageous. This guy um, can get up. Yeah, the power that he shows as well on, on his reps. Um, is also very impressive. And so Brian Callahan, we asked him today about what he's seen from Tavondre Sweat through these first two practices, and here's what he had to say. A lot of guys right now that, that probably aren't in full football shape or he'll play a full game, and then that's why we, we're in training camp. Uh, but everything I've seen from him is, is what I saw on tape. You know, he's big, strong. Uh, he moves incredibly well for a person of his size. Uh, and he's an awesome personality to be around. So uh, really have enjoyed what he's done so far. Happy he's ready to roll and help me and practice it. So uh, looking forward to seeing what's to come when the pads come out with him. And so uh, Brian Callahan shares much of the same sentiment here with Tavondre Sweat. You know, he's as advertised for this team. And, you know, um, I think he also gives credit to Tavondre Sweat, you know, with this whole kind of conversation we've been having about Tavondre Sweat being in shape enough or, or whatever. It, it's the second day of practice, and there are, I promise you guys that there are many guys out there struggling to, to get back into this football shape. It's not something that you come in ready for. The, it, Almost probably 75% of these guys out there are still somewhat trying to get back into football shape. And so, therefore, I don't believe that Tavondre Sweat should be treated any differently than these other guys who are trying to work back. Um, and so he has done everything he's needed to do. Can I so say far. something? This is such a this is not not a dishonest line of of reasoning, but uh, one of the more uninformed lines of reasoning. When I see people talk about that, he's not in football shape. Look at this guy. It, it is July 25th. If you talk to any NFL veteran that is honest, they will tell you, you pretty much play yourself into football, like not throughout the season, but like you get back to camp, you can be conditioned up for sure. You can be highly conditioned, but you gotta, you gotta get out there and do the thing and, and get through training camp to get yourself back into football shape. Pretty much. There are some rare exceptions of guys, but for the most part, that's what they're doing. They're out there revving it back up. And so when Brian Callahan comes out and says there are many guys that are getting themselves back up to football shape and getting that conditioning to where it needs to be, that's not fluff where he's trying to 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 cover for the Tavondre Sweats of the team. He is telling the truth. And if Tavondre Sweat is in that group, guess what? I would be I, I think it would be fair for me to assume the, the, the big boys on the team are the ones most often having to do that. Like they, they come in, you hear all the time about how linemen you lose weight throughout the season. So it's kind of a different science for them, right? They come in a little bit bigger. You got to come in with a little bit of baby weight on you so that you can be bulked up and, and afford to lose a couple pounds as you sweat it out through August. And then you get into the ball season and you can't quite keep the pounds on. Like you got to kind of be that way. So it's just dumb. And I know, I know you have more into Andre Sweat, but I can, I real quick shout out our buddy Stoney who on football and other F words, I believe yesterday went on the best 
be the best 60 seconds of podcasting I've ever heard from Stoney. It is a fantastic rant on the defense of Tavondre Sweat and how he does not blame the guy. And we were talking about this with him yesterday about how this guy has kind of seemed clammed up a little bit. And I think you're going to see it here in this video from Tavondre where you guys were talking to him. He doesn't seem like the same guy in an interview that he that he was showing us when we got uh, the the Zoom interview with him after the draft. And I don't blame the guy because he's he's a, he's a highly drafted. If I was a highly drafted rookie, put yourself in his shoes for two minutes, guys, and you are joining a new team. And then the, the entire you know you just got drafted. You've not seen the field yet. And the entire summer, all you see is your new fan base talking about how you are overdrafted. You're too fat. You're gonna be a you're gonna be a personality problem off of the football field. They don't think you got it. Like they're not even giving you a chance, to, despite the fact that in college this is this is not a charity pick. In college, you kicked ass and won awards for kicking ass, and nobody seems to care. I'd be on a personal level, I'd be kind of heartbroken. You, you get to the NFL, you achieve your dream, and everybody hates you before you've done anything on your on your own team. That's heartbreaking. And I'd also be furious. And I, I would be surprised if he doesn't feel both of those things. So I, I don't mean to interrupt you, JT, but I wanted to just give my two cents on that because it's been bothering me as much as it seems to have been bothering our friend Stoney. No, I, I kind of second every all of your sentiments there. And maybe know? he sucks. He, I'm not saying he's not going to I don't know. I'm just saying it's been unfair. I'm saying it's been unfair. The, and I agree with you. I think, you know, it's not to say that you can't judge Tavondre Sweat, but you need to – it's time that – for to to as I said on Twitter yesterday in reply to Stoney's video as well, it's time to judge Tavondre Sweat the player and evaluate that, and mm. no longer evaluate or stop evaluating Tavondre Sweat the person because it's clear that he's done everything he needed to do to get to where he is. He's done everything they've asked of him so far. Uh, you know the the injury was a, a real thing in recovering to be healthy enough to be here and be consistent in practices every day for the Titans. He's done that. He is now here with the team every single day. His teammates obviously think that he is a welcome presence in the locker room uh, from everyone we've talked to uh, about Tavondre Sweat. They love his personality. He is he is a positive uh, player in this locker room for this team and this defense. He has done everything that they that they thought he could be and, and what they think he can be on the field. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's one thing to continue on this Tavondre Sweat evaluation and psychoanalysis of of the guy but that it, there, it just doesn't matter anymore because That's now it's just, can we just it's now about ball? the results it's yes. about the results Let's just let him play football and see what happens and yeah. like you said he may struggle uh, you know I, I i don't think we we talk about how good the player can be but we, we still have to understand that he's a rookie he's a second round pick <laughs> um, breaking news rookie struggles at the beginning of nfl career exactly put so, it on the front page you know, a1 I, I, story I, it's 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 a real shame that you know even if he does get out of the gate slow that he's going to be scrutinized a lot more than I think he should. Mm -hmm. But it's time to just look at at, at the performance on the field and, and nothing else around that until something until he proves us wrong. I think is the is what I can say. Which I it's don't gonna think be he will. real rich if if in the first month both even the first game you see Tavondre Sweat have some have a rough game and you see uh, uh, um uh. JC Latham have a rough game and, and the I I'm, I'm going to be pretty surprised people are fair about it I think it's going to be a real double standard of like well you know left tackles a tough position he's changing but like you, you got to start somewhere right you know I'm not worried about it he's done everything he needs to do and then Devondre Sweat like this guy played 20 snaps in his first game second round pick top 40 pick what are we doing he's already it's going to be so frustrating to see people give one guy all the rope in the world. I'm not saying that you, you should be harder necessarily. I, like, yes, both of them may struggle and both of them deserve a, a second to catch their breath in the NFL, but you can't give miles of rope to one guy and absolutely no rope to the other. If you're going to be a fair evaluator of, of football, it's just, it's, it's silly. So we can continue. Yeah. And, and so we did get the chance to talk to him yesterday after practice. Uh, the first of the two questions here of, of clips I have here is just how he is acclimating from the college level to the NFL level. Obviously, it is a big change uh, from training camps and, and differing practices. So we get his thoughts about that. And then uh, a little bit of a response to how he is kind of dealing with that that adversity and the pressure around him and how important it is to have guys like Jeffrey Simmons and Keandre Coburn uh, with him on this team. And so here are his answers to both those questions. Um, for my rookie year, I'll say it's a lot different because, I mean, 
you on your own, you know what I mean? So really just working out and just trying to get prepared for this. Uh, I'm used to it. I'm you, used to it. Anything, it is it is. Um, and you mentioned Jeff, you, you know, having him, having Keandre, like how yeah, big is that for you in this process? It's great, especially uh, having Coburn, you know, he was one of my older cats uh, at UT, so it was just great uh, being with him also. And just Jeff, I mean, Jeff is Jeff. Y'all, everybody know. So. And, you don't know. And so, you know, he, he says that he's used to it and, and, you know, it is what it is. And so, you know, uh, props to him being able to kind of live with that noise and still be able to produce on the field. And, and like I said, I mean, going back to even to ask his, what, his, how, like, how's he looked out there? We've not really diatribe aside the first two days of practice. What any thoughts on what he's looked like in that group? I, I would say that he, he plays with the with the power and the strength that that he okay. needs to on, on that line you know especially yeah. i i would say on the on the first day um where the defense was kind of suffocating mm -hmm. the the tandem the tandem is there <laughs> the, the 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 two boys are out couple there big playing. fellas yeah there's yeah. a couple big fellas out there and if they can elevate that and get that to work uh even 75 percent of the time man is it going to like we talked about open up some avenues for some other guys on the outside and you know even a guy like Jamal Adams who is able to blitz off the line and, and do mm. what he does best it's going to it's going to mean a lot I, I think the first day the the offensive lineman got got a helpful helpful scoop of, of the Tavondre Sweat experience now on the second day I still think that he played with the disruptive power that that I've seen on the tape uh however you know, on the second day, Bill Callahan came back with a vengeance today and had his boys on the offensive line right. And I Good. think that was a big... Good. Um, they were ha able to have a little bit more success today. I saw Bill Callahan a lot more animated today, being a lot more excited. Pads. Get them in pads. Uh, I need them yeah. in pads. And it, like I said, it's really still hard to evaluate. Right, I, right. I, want, I want to talk more about Tavondre Sweat, but... At the same time, when Tavondre Sweat and, and these guys are, are, you know, engaging for two and a half seconds and then kind of giving up because that, that's what mm -hmm. they're told to do because yeah. there's no pads on. It's kind of hard to see the, the full Tavondre Sweat experience, but you can see the 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 uh, the kind of structure in the outline of, of the player. And now, mm -hmm. like you said, I'm eager for like Brian Callahan said at the press conference today. Next Tuesday, I I'm eager. I want to see it. Oh, is that I, the like, date we know? Next I, Tuesday, I, I believe. I believe he said. Well, he I said, will be there no matter him. what. I will be there. I will be there. He said. He said, "Don't quote him on it," but he believes that it is next Tuesday. All right, so, I'm quoting him, um, and I will be there. All right. Anyways, that's enough to Andre Sweat. I feel like we've gone on a diatribe. Uh, you know. Yeah, there are other players on this team. How they do? There are many yeah, other. There are other players on this team, yeah. and another Stony Keeley favorite. We're going to talk about here. John Ajuku uh, is a guy that has been getting a lot of buzz. Really, uh, over the past couple of days, because as we know, MPF is not, he's currently on the active pup, still, um, you know, coming back from his knee uh, scope and, and kind of cleaning up that uh, injury there. So we expect him to be out here eventually. Uh, but right now, that right tackle spot is open for grabs and, and it's up for grabs. And a guy that uh, we've talked a lot about and who has been uh, a guy who, has looked pretty good so far through training camp and mm -hmm. also in OTAs is John Ajoku. Um, and so Brian Callahan was asked about him today um, through the first two days. And here's what he had to say about OJ. And that's a good thing. You know, he's, he's not making errors. He's doing what he's supposed to do, what he's coached to do uh, and, and doing it well. Again, this is all going to change next week. Um, we'll really see what it's all about. But as far as the work that he's done, his attention to detail, the techniques, um, and knowing what to do, uh, it's been really good. He's done a nice job. And he's been he's been physical. He's been locked in the meeting room. So uh, he's made the most of an opportunity, and I'm, I'm happy to see it. And so that it's pretty nice praise from his head coach. You know, and the biggest thing he said at the at the beginning, which may kind of sound weird, but it, it is true. You don't notice him out there. And that's a really good thing when you don't thing notice him out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, not making too many mistakes, kind of looking the part when they need him to step up. And so I, I think right now, as we talked about on Tuesday's show with Stoney, um, he still thinks that OJ is the is the outside candidate to win that right tackle job. Hearing that today where Brian Callahan says you don't really notice him out there and he's making the most of his opportunity, it sounds certainly like he has as good of a shot as any uh, to be the starting right tackle of this team. I expect MPF to take this job. Do not get me wrong. But if the first day MPF is back out there, you're still getting first team o OJ, 
which we won't be able to say explicitly on the show because we can't talk about exactly where guys played when, where, and how. Um, but if it happens, there will be signs. We, we, <laughs> there will be signs. We will, <laughs> we, we will, <laughs> we will make that known by the way that we talk about them. And I will, I don't know what I'll do. I'll be, I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to we'll, see. We'll, Let's, I'm not, I don't think it's going to happen, but if it does, um, if it does, but. I, I do agree with you. I think this is what we talked about on Tuesday before we even got into practices. We talked about who was in the pull position for the right tackle spot. And I mm -hmm. think from everything we heard from Bill Callahan at OTAs to even now talking about MPF at, at that at Tuesday's press conference, it still seems like MPF is in the pull position based on, you know, that veteran uh, kind of presence he has now. He has the experience on the right side of the line. Um, and it seems like once they get him back out here, um, they are going to continue that. But the the counterpoint to that argument is that, you know, MPF is a little bit behind the eight ball compared to these other guys who are out there putting in the work every day. Not to say that he's not putting the work work in uh, inside and off the practice field, but it, that's a totally different animal. And so, you know, if MPF is not out here um, until next week and they already have the pads on and then he looks right. like he's behind the eight ball, that's where I right. think you get into um, some trouble. And, I think we should uh, continue on here because, man, we we we're doing a lot of show and tell today. And uh, this, it, man, there's more to show. About, there's more to tell. Let's do it. There's more to show, more to tell. And you know, now I, I don't blame you anymore, Easton, for people telling you that we can't get out of here in an hour because you know you just get sucked up into it. And so, my my my, how the tables have tell the tell the turntables. <laughs> when you're in charge of the content, you realize there's a lot to talk about. All right, and now let's finally get okay, to. All right. let, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna comment on that. Let's get yeah. to uh, the QB one of this team, Will Levis. We had the opportunity to talk to him yesterday, and uh, we we're talking about one of the biggest storylines of the Titans training camp coming into it is how is he going to look, and how is that um, kind of development and, and the the tweaking of his mechanics. How is that going to show up in the first two days? Uh, Brian Callahan, I don't have the clip, but. Uh, was very confident in his quarterback today and said if he continues to stack good days like the last two, um, he's going to you know have what it takes to be a real factor and real playmaker in this league. And so Brian Callahan was very complimentary of him today, and he's looked really good. You go back, and uh, I believe the Titans posted a clip yesterday of mm -hmm. uh, throw to MPF where you know it looks like he has a little bit of a softer touch wow. on the throw. Um, and they got MPF out there with the hurt knee and everything. <laughs> that's crazy oh, sorry they had a nwi NWI. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. sorry. <laughs> nwi yeah and sorry nwi my bad i'm, I'm uh, sad i missed that that sounds amazing um no the, the I, yes, to, NWI. To nwi with a little bit of a softer touch um that it's something that i think a lot of us noticed it was noticeably different about will levis's throw um you know no longer uh, you know, maybe last year that throw would have been an absolute bullet and maybe not completable. Lasers but, everywhere. Just lasers. Uh, this year, yeah. it's like he's taken a little bit off of it and put a little bit more finesse on it. And so we were able to talk to him about that and also how he's grown as a leader. And so here's what he had to say first off on his trip to Cabo and, and being that leader. And then the second clip here is uh, a little bit more on those mechanics uh, and what he's been working on. I was in a position to do stuff like that, and obviously, it being my first off season, being the starting quarterback and having that job, I, I have seen guys in the league do that with, with their guys in the past, and I was really looking forward to having that opportunity to go and do some team bonding in a cool spot and get some working at the same time. But yeah, that was a cool trip, and then it's it's not just fun stuff like that. It's it's throughout camp. How can I help guys and reach out in any way possible and just be available to to help them and. Uh, help them improve and help some guys you know, make the team. So um, I'm here as a resource and uh, they know that. I'm going to continue to do my best to, to show them that I can uh, be that for them. Mm -hmm. I think um, being a little calmer, not as dramatic with some of the things I'm doing with my footwork, especially on the plant foot. And then once I get to the top of my drop, my base, I know I've talked about that a lot, but I feel really good where I'm at with that. Um, I feel like at the top of my drops and, and through my hitches, I'm able to keep myself in a more consistent uh, position to deliver the ball. And um, just got to keep working on making it more consistent. As a team. And so that that's kind of the focus here. He, he's kind of calming it down. And so as Glory Day Sports in the in the in the comments, as I prefer the term piss missile, mm. no more piss missiles. It seems mm. like it seems like we, we've matured 
into his second year and it's no longer see target throw ball hard it's blow chig's hands clean off his body in the end <laughs> exactly. zone anymore that's kind of uh, disappointing i mean it's still in there right it could happen it's still in his body it's right it's still in there but i i think that it is um you're not going to see it as much and i think right. we we've kind of going back to what Brian Callahan said at the beginning of the day, it's kind of in the plan to get these receivers back on the field, working on that, that crossing in breaking routes in things only about eight to 10 yards down the field, because I think that's something that uh, needs more emphasis for Will Levis. Will we know Will Levis can chuck the ball 45, 50 yards down the field at any given moment. Like let's start seeing them, you know, in this new Brian Callahan offense where we've seen kind of shades of, um, a system where much like Joe Burrow, the death by a thousand cuts, these, these utilizing the, the middle of the field in these short yardage plays to, um, you know, wear out a defense and make them tired. That's something that Will Levis is not really used to. And so I think, you know, by design, we're starting to see a lot more of that. I don't have much to add there. Just that I, I'm glad that he started with a strong day in the first two and it's going to be on him to stack these days. I I'm curious to see if the narrative after, let's say two weeks becomes okay. We can, I think say there's enough sample size. Now he looks different in training camp so far than he did in the spring. Cause that's ultimately what, that's what we're looking for, right? That's what we need to see from him. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, you know, today there was a lot of great defensive pass breakups, but the ball was really nicely thrown. There was one to Tyler Boyd that was broken up by Roger McCreary, which was right in the basket. Great play by Roger McCreary. And then to end the end the day, he threw a really nice ball a little bit more down the field to DeAndre Hopkins, which Gabe Judy Lally may or may not have committed several pass interference calls oh. on that. But listen, know, but. rookie mistake, future Hall of Famer. <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Exactly. Um, but, you know, he, he has looked good so far. So far, he is answering good. that storyline with two thumbs up. And so now we can move on to two more guys here. Um, first of all, Jeffrey Simmons, we had the, the opportunity to talk to him yesterday about kind of being, you know, now the face of the franchise a little bit, you know, with Derrick Henry gone. Um, he is not only a leader on the defense, but a leader in the clubhouse. Um, how does, how his, does he handle kind of being that face of the franchise now um, and, and being that guy that everyone looks to? And I thought that he gave a very lengthy and fantastic answer to this question yesterday, and here's what he had to say. I go back a couple years ago, like when I first got here, I had guys like Jarrell Casey, um, even Daquan, Wesley Williard, all them guys who I, I was, you know, they always, you know, when becoming a leader, you have to know when to follow. And I think as I was growing, um, especially through that, my first year as a um, rookie, I was learning a lot from them guys. And I want to say probably like going to my second year and then really my third year where I really felt like you know, this was my team. I've, I've been feeling that way. You know, um, as y'all know, like on Sundays, I break the huddle down. Um, that's something I take pride in. But as, as when you're growing, trying to grow as a leader, you want that responsibility because it's not, I, I guess what, what I would say, when you're first looking at it, when you come into the building, it's about you, you know, how you are approaching the day. Um, you know, when you have a bad day or practice, you have a bad rep, you know, guys looking at your body language. And then one thing I talk to the defense about the practice is just, by the language, you know, and um, like I said, I take full responsibility of it. You know, I love it. I love challenges, but at the end of the day, I've been felt like this was my team. Um, you know, I don't try to do more um, or less of my job, but I also been feeling like I was a leader. Um, I've been feeling that, but like I said, I saw what Randy was said, you know, just the audit, I mean, the um, interview he had, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I take responsibility of the team. It's just like, you know, Stand up for my guys, at, no matter what it is. Um, holding them accountable, you know, having their back, whatever it may be. But like I said, we all trying to get to one goal. You know, we all have. It's a lot of leaders in this building. You know, I, I hope they're not always putting it on me. <laughs> you know, I'm looking for my other teammates to step up, even when I'm doing something wrong or my body language or anything that in that nature. So I'm excited um, just to take it on a bigger role, if you want to call that. But then that day, I've been feeling like I've been had that role in the team. So. How much how that work? Gosh, that, that was that a long was, answer. Wow. It was. That was, that was a long it, answer. It was a very lengthy answer, but I think it kind of gives you a look into kind of his mindset about where he is now in his career and, and the the kind of taking that that leadership role on his shoulders to be the guy um, and kind of carry this franchise with him and what he does. And I think it, it's really interesting to see that insight from him. And then before we get to a couple more clips, um, 
do not have the clip of DeAndre Hopkins today, but I think we should really discuss that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Very interesting answer from DeAndre Hopkins today, because when we talked to Rand Carthen on Tuesday, um, we were talking about, you know, DeAndre Hopkins on the last year of his deal here, any possibility of an extension or, you know, what what would that look like for DeAndre Hopkins specifically when it, it DeAndre was, Hopkins uh, is one of the guys that we have considered potentially maybe extending. He's in that group, I believe yes. was the very. I, I, I believe that that Brent was Carson. the answer there. And so when he was at the podium today, we asked him. You know, it was kind of like the the way it was. Uh, Rand Carthon kind of stated it at begin at the beginning was that these guys know their standing with us, and we know their uh, our standing with them. You know, mm-hmm. like they have a good understanding of where the player and the team is at. And so we asked DeAndre Hopkins about what exactly is that standing with the team right now? And so his answer today uh, came from, I love Tennessee and I love what Miss Amy is doing. Hopkins said, "Um, I think this is the happiest I've been in any organization. So let that speak for itself, which I think is a very interesting answer today. Texas Um, fans, where you at? Where you at, Texas fans? Yeah, Houston, yeah. Texas um, fans think they have it bad today. What they don't realize is this: this this is maybe the second worst day of their DeAndre Hopkins experience. The worst day is going to be the day that DeAndre Hopkins gets inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame as a Tennessee Titan. That's gonna really that's gonna suck for them. Um, wow. If and when that happens, I don't actually think it's gonna happen. But how funny would it be? Do the players get a say in that? Do you get to choose as a player? I what? don't. I don't. I think you just go in. I don't no, you go in like, as I think you go in as a I'm pretty sure you go in as a player of a I team. thought you didn't but I maybe maybe I'm wrong um but that was very interesting he went on to up. say um, I hope that I'm right because it's funnier if I'm right but you might be right um he also went on to say that you know he is a country boy at heart which I think is very interesting he clearly loves Nashville um and so was a really interesting and insightful answer to that and I think that kind of shows where he's at. And so now the ball is kind of in Rand Carthen's court as they get through uh, this season. You know, he's also asked, is there any kind of, or does he buy into the, the contract year boost? And so um, DeAndre Hopkins, you know, was very um, loosely answered that question saying, you know, I'm just going to play my game. I take it day by day, but you know, it'll be interesting to see how this season unfolds and how Tennessee responds in terms of contract extension. Is a new, I'm sorry, I, I'm so, I'm caught on this. Is a new Hall of Fame player member enshrined as a team or a member of a, as a player or a member of a team? Ah, teams take great pride in a kind of, uh, as it, uh, often individual teams and even the Hall of Fame will enshrine, will list enshrinees according to the team or teams on which they spend a significant period of time. An enshrinee, however, is not asked to declare, nor does the Hall of Fame choose a team under which a new player is enshrined. So you're not asked to do it. But you could, but you could choose to do it. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And All after right, so. the reports at the end of the Texans run, where it was like uh, Bill O'Brien was like besmirching his name to the public and to the media, and they were getting into fights in the locker room, would be a funny bit, DeAndre. Just let me play, let me plant that seed in your mind real quick. Yeah. That that is something you could potentially do one day. All righty. And so now we can look to uh, just a couple of quick hits here from the defensive reactions and then two odds and ends, and then we'll get out of here. Um, but the first two clips here are, we got the chance to talk to the the newest, one of the newest Titans, I guess, Corey Levin and Shane Ray would technically be the newest Titans, but ah, Jamal Corey Adams, Levin, before that, <laughs> I guess, yeah, right. uh, Jamal Adams, we, we asked him, you know, why did you pick Tennessee? What made you want to come here? Um, and so his answer is this clip right here. Probably the main thing, obviously being around Denard, being around Jack and Frank Bush and those guys again. It's it's almost like home base, you know. Those guys raised me, and you know I'm just grateful to be back. How was your? And so he 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 kind of comes out and says, you know, I really picked this because of the comfortability uh, of being right. a guy around guys like Denard Wilson and a lot of these defensive head coaches that he has uh, a history with, and calling it kind of home base really kind of I think. Um, reinforces the idea that Jamal Adams is looking for a fresh start and kind of trying to co- just build the building blocks of, of who he is as a player again. And that is going back to basics with guys that, you know, contributed to the best Jamal Adams, the best version of him. And so I right. think that um, it was a lot of what went into his decision. And, you know, as a Titans fan, I think you can feel really good that, you know, this is a fit that if he's able to stay healthy could work out uh, for this defense and for the team. And so 
we asked Jamal Adams after that, you know, you talk a lot about Den- Denard Wilson. Um, it, what what else can you say about him a- a- as a coach? And, you know, he, he goes on here to say he's one of one, and, and this is the rest of his answer. Oh, man, it's just so, so many things. Uh, he's, a, he's a very unique guy, one of one. Um, you know, obviously just his accountability, uh, just staying on the players, making sure everybody's, you know, chasing greatness. Um, and, you know, obviously I feel like I got away from that a little bit. Um, you know, you, you can't slack around him. You can't slack around any of these coaches out here. Um, because they're, they're pushing you to be the best. How's your health up? And so that that's an interesting answer from him, you know, saying that he kind of got away with it, but got away from it. That's, maybe that's some self-awareness there. Yeah. Uh, talking about maybe his time with Seattle and how things mm-hmm. ended there. Um, but now kind of coming back to, to Denard Wilson, I think, you know, it gives him the best shot to be a, a, at least a semblance of what Jamal Adams was. Was that a line of, of questioning from you guys? Did you... Did anybody dance around the idea that like Jamal, you went to Seattle? What happened? Like, or do you do you still, or maybe do you still think you got that player in you that's a first team All Pro? Was that something you guys asked him about? So we did, we did ask him uh, about that, and you know, we we're like, J- what Jamal, what will, what does it take for you to get mm-hmm. back there? And his answer mainly was around you know trusting in God and just believing in His plan for him. Big fan um, of that, and that's, you know, I'm, I'm, in, being, I'm in on that being, right uh, there. It's being take just trying to stay healthy because he believes that, yeah. you know, that play he does, he, he did double down and say that he believes that player is still in there, even though he's a little bit, you know, with that, if that player is still in there, the maturity that's kind of come with Jamal Adams. I was personally did he very say he's impressed healthy right now, him. by the way, did you, did they ask? He did. He's, yes. He yeah, says okay. he, he's fully healthy, ready to go. Um, and I think that just kind of more emphasized the point. He kind of doubled down on, telling us about that quad injury that left him in a wheelchair for 10 to 15 weeks without being able to really walk and, you know, not deal. being able to big deal. Uh, go to the bathroom by himself, not able to shower by himself. Like and then this, coming this, back that season and trying to play mm-hmm. it's, you know, that there's going to be a ramp up there. So I think there that, is. And so, I, you know, I'm not all in on Jamal Adams, but if you told me it really worked out there, there's a, there's a path. I see a path. If that makes sense. And the way that they've been using him so far, you know, it, it plays to Jamal Adams' strengths is okay. what I can say there. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, a, you know, as a guy who, you know, we've talked about maybe the lacklusterness of, of coverage, you know, in, in not being able to play that kind of role. The things that Jamal Adams does really good in the past, being able Still to blitz, blitz off the line of scrimmage and, yeah. and be this kind of guy that, that can really confuse offenses and, and find the hole and be that heat seeking missile trigger. Um, yeah. y- y- you see that from him. And, and I think okay. that is how, you know, playing on a, on a defense as aggressive as Denard Wilson's and how aggressive he wants to be. I think that could really lend itself to working in their favor this season. Um, this clip right here from Legereus Sneed, we got to talk to him today, and uh, we talked to him a little bit about his management program. Obviously, uh, he was not out there for the stretching portion. We did not see him, and then he came out during the um, the team period, but still did not uh, participate. He was out there, but was not participating with the team, and so we asked him about that. Is it important to you um, to, you know, as a kind of veteran leader on this team, be a guy who's out there, even if you are on this management program and not practicing. And here's what he had to say. The other day, you know, I post the game back in and finished my rehab and whatever. I stayed out there and watched those guys, and, you know, coached them up on the plays. They asked me questions. I try to give them the best I can. Is there a and so, you know, he says he was supposed to go back inside, but, you know, staying out there as the leader, he thinks he can be on this team, helping uh, maybe some other guys out on plays, I think speaks to a lot of how bought in Legereus Sneed is on this team and this defense. He was, um, you know, he, he kind of sung the praises of Denard Wilson's defense today and really says he fits well into this and thinks that if everything goes right, it can be one of the best in the league. And I think along with that, the ability to be that leader in, you know, coach up some of the other guys is going to go a long way. Yeah, I think that, that is an important thing, and I'm glad that he recognizes that. I, I'm i fascinated by the Legereus Sneed situation. I've never seen a player as young as he is have such confidence in how to, to have a, let's face it, a chronic issue of some sort and be so confident so early in your career on the way that you manage that not just to be able to be out there and to survive or just to succeed, but to dominate, to be so dominant as a young player 
and have such a significant issue that you you're not working through it like you he seems to the way that they have talked about it the way that he approaches it it seems like he feels like at least he's got it figured out he knows the recipe to make his body work and i just find that pretty fascinating yeah, I mean, th that is something we asked him about today as well. Okay. Um, you know, we were talking about, are you healthy? And he said, yes. And uh, he was kind of pressed on that question and says, okay, so if you're healthy, uh, does that mean that you can practice a little bit more? And he said, no, I know my body. I know what I have to do to be out there when the games matter. So right. talking to that point, it is a very interesting case. Um, but obviously he has his plan that really worked for him in Kansas City. And it sounds like uh, he took that plan, maybe modified it a little bit with with the guys here uh, with the Titans. And it seems like they are in a good spot where they are confident that that he thinks he's healthy and he knows what he has to do. And so, you know, I, I, I'm not sure how much we're going to see of him out here. Um, that's yet to be seen. We saw him yesterday, but not today. Mm. Um, so it'll be interesting to kind of monitor that as we go along. Um, we have two more clips here on the defense and then two more and we'll get out of here. Uh, this first one here from Kenneth Murray, uh, just kind of talking about, you know, coming to the Titans here, kind of getting a little bit of a fresh start, being ready to go. How does he feel about, you know, his his position with the Titans and, and coming to this new team and being able to make an impact? Here's what he had to say on that matter. You know, now I'm healthy, back into the swing of things. You know, it's a lot of, a lot of mental mental side of stuff, you know, learning the playbook and doing different things like that. So, that, yeah. That shoulder back to normal, man? Yeah, yeah, I'm 100%. So, um, yeah, everything, everything is good. And so it sounds like he's pretty confident about his ability to make an impact on this team. And even so, it. right, that, that's something that we Let's really are going to have to see. Um, but I can tell you, for one thing, Brian Callahan was very confident um, in, in Kenneth Murray today. Oh. Um, we asked him about, how he's looked so far through two days and what he had to say is that he triggers fast he's hard to block he diagnoses really quick and his ability to react is impressive which wow. kind of is is counter counterintuitive to the things we've said about him um and so uh with that you know kenneth murray i think he has a lot to prove here right and so we're going to have to see the, the results on the field because it's one thing to be able to trigger like that and, and diagnose plays in padless football but when you have another team on you and you have a guy like a zay flowers or a jackson smith and jigba or a, or a um a josh downs who you're gonna see twice a year and you know in, in those situations can he be that player that brian callahan thinks he can it'll be interesting to see fair enough fair enough this last clip here is from roger mccrory we got to talk to him today as well um, this is just a little bit more about how he's learning the playbook and, and kind of how he's approaching this season a little bit differently, you know, being more of a student of a game of the game and how he is able to elevate his game because of the the style of defense Denard Wilson um, wants to play. And here was his answer on that. Yeah, I mean, really, like that's more about like just being a player of the game, just learning the playbook. Because if you learn the playbook, you can play fast and you play aggressive. You don't got to think so much. So like when we get in the means, just trying to be still another game, really, just proving now. I know he's going to Yeah, I think that. And so he seems like he is bought into the Denard Wilson defense as well. Um, and so obviously with, with the absence of Cheeto Wuzier, um, he's going to have to step up on this defense. And we talked to him about how, you know, how versatile can you be um, with your game? And he says he can play both positions, but he feels like he's in a good spot right now. Um, obviously playing that inside slot corner position, I think is going to be what leads to most of his success, but that versatility on Denard Wilson's defense definitely can, um, be a, a big factor, I think. Yeah. Sorry. I'm just distracted by the comments here. Um, I, I, I think Roger McCray, I, I want to ask you a question that I know you can't answer. So I'm trying to try to figure out how to ask the question. I guess what I'll say is from just the two days we've seen from Roger, Roger McCreary, plus what you and I saw in the spring from him. I know you came out of the spring kind of talking about him being at the near, like near the top, if not at the top of the guys you think may be a serious breakout candidate this season, even though he's slotted into most folks depth charts on the you know the cornerback three role that that slot nickel guy that's going to be playing inside most of the time which is where i think he's supposed to be but that doesn't mean that he isn't capable of playing outside 
Do you get the impression that he maybe moves a little bit more? Do you get the impression that um, he's coming into the season improve? Like, it, it, does he does he feel dominant out there to you? What has been your impression watching him from the sidelines as far as what you can actually say? I would say to, to his improvement, I, I think this is probably the best version of Roger McCreary we've seen so far. Okay. Um, we talk about the play that he made today. Um, it was kind of, it was more of a seam play down the middle um, on his pass breakup of, of Tyler Boyd, um, where he was playing a little bit more uh, against Tyler Boyd. He looked very dominant. He looked like a guy who is going to be, uh, one of those leaders and aggressive dominators on the field that maybe we haven't seen from Roger McCreary. Um, so from that aspect of, of it, I, I definitely can say that this will be um, my, 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 I would say that my hype for Roger McCreary has not weakened. It is not, it is not faltered. Only I growing. Still, okay. it, it's still right. growing from what I've seen so far. I, I still very much believe that if there is anyone who can break out on this Titans defense this year and have, you know, an all pro caliber season, I really do think it is Roger McCreary. Fair enough. Fair enough. I hope to see it. All right. And so these last two clips, just some odds and ends here. First up, Ryan Stonehouse is back, not on the pup list. He is out there kicking punts. He's out there doing the thing. Um, and so he was asked on yesterday's uh, at yesterday's practice, if there was an NFL game today, could you be able to punt in that game? And this was his answer uh, to that and just kind of telling of where he is right now in his recovery process. Where I'm at right now, like, I, I don't see a, a thing, but I think that there's so much room for improvement, you know, just getting back out there. And that's why I'm taking one step at a time. You know, I think this was the first step. And, um, you know, not going off EUP was huge because, you know, you, these are valuable reps and you only get so many reps, um, you know, that are, that are game-like. And these are my game reps right now. You know, I didn't get to punt OTAs, which I would have loved to. Um, but I do feel like it's I'm on the right road back. Well, I mean, and so then the final clip we have here is from Peter Skaronsky today, who we also were able to talk to, and just a little bit more about you know how meaningful these reps are right now, getting and building that chemistry with with the guys around you, most notably J.C. Latham and Lloyd Cushenberry on his side of the line, and, and how much that matters right now only even two days into training camp and here's what he had to say this is this is the time to do that um you know obviously camp feels long but at the end of the day it's not that many reps you know so you have to take advantage of every single rep that you have out here because you know we have a preseason game in two weeks and then you know two or three weeks later we're playing so i think it makes it puts the emphasis on every single rep you take especially with that first group is is kind of working together and executing because presidencies will be here all right, and those are the clips that we have today. A lot of show and tell for you guys today. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that, that's Titans football training camp is back, baby. We're, we're out there, you know, doing the It feels good to be back. It feels thing. good to be showing these clips yeah. on the show. I will say I'm, I am really, I'm, I'm excited to the point of being relieved to hear that we're going to be in pads as early as the beginning of next week. Um, just because as fun as that is, it's, you know, we saw that in the spring. We got, we got another little appetizer here to start off the the summer portion, but let's get let's get into some real football. Let's see these guys start popping pads. Let's see some uh let's let's see some banging of hats out there is what I like to see. So um JT, very appreciative of all the work you did the last two days. I would not have been able to do the show today because I would not have known what to say. So thank you for updating me and everyone out there that did not um catch every second of it like you did on what we saw. Like you mentioned earlier, the next we'll hear and see from the Titans will be on Saturday at the, what are they calling it? The um, back, at back, back together, together Saturday weekend, back together event. Something? Yeah, yeah it's, it's like going to be a, like a like a fanfare event at Nissan Stadium practice from like 12, 10 to 12, something like that on Saturday afternoon at Nissan Stadium. Something like that. Something yeah. like that should be a fun one. I'm I may very well be there. JT will definitely be there. Um, I really don't want to miss it. I might have to miss it because, you know important things but um if i if i can be i'll be there and then on tuesday i'm definitely gonna be at one of these two things because on tuesday they'll be wearing pads and i uh i will be pulling every string that i have if somebody wants to come babysit uh, so that i can go do that that'd be awesome um <laughs> i will not i will not uh abandon my wife but if she's good i might pop out to practice for an hour and see what's going on okay um appreciate everybody watching with us live on a thursday i'm gonna go sleep i if you were counting easton the yawn counter for easton went up to like 13 by the end of today's show um, 
So I'm going to go do that. Logan in the chat. This man is already back after sleeping in the hospital for three days. I slept in the hospital for two days, so I'm fine. It's not a big deal. I'm just very tired. Um, but like you said, incredible resilience and dedication. That's what we do. We, we, we focus on we focus on the ball. And, uh, she, you know, the new child doesn't change. Well, it does change that, but it doesn't stop that. And that's, what, that's what's important. Over well, under a week and a half until baby cam is officially up and running. Hashtag <laughs> hot read baby cam. The baby may make a visual appearance on the show at some point this month. Um, if I can convince my wife to let me have her. You know, new moms love to have their baby and not give other people the baby, which is understandable. So I mean, I've heard, the dad, I've heard through the grapevine that, that your baby has some hot takes on Anthony Richardson, some hot yeah, takes the, on Yeah, in the Andre very short Sweat. period of time that I've you had know, to spend with her she, one-on-one she's so already, far, you know, she's, she's been whispering me ball. sweet nothings <laughs> into my ear. First of all, shocked she knows English already, but she's just that intelligent. Yeah. Not not that surprised that she was early on it, surprised by just how early. Um and then uh, for her to have such fantastic knowledge of ball, I don't know. Maybe she'll have some more hot takes I drop on, on the timeline as the training camp goes on. But anyways, uh, Saturday practice, Tuesday practice. We'll be back on Tuesday of next week. Um, JT and I will be recapping those two practices, what we saw and what Boys we heard and pads. Men in, and pads. in those past it's going to really suck if that's Prove it in pads. Not true, if, if it's but, not, yeah, it's going to really suck. He said but, that he said that the CBA needs seven days of non of non contact contact and they technically started on tuesday they were so in the building the on seventh tuesday. day oh, so, oh i see i see yeah so yeah. but do they does that mean you have to practice on every day like do they practice sunday do they practice monday i don't know okay well hoping and praying that they uh <laughs> practice in pads on tuesday until then whether they're practicing in pads or naked or you know who, whatever they're practicing in we'll have covered it and be back here on the hot read podcast uh, at 4 p.m. on Tuesday. Until then, one more time, go to the comment section or go to the description of this podcast. Find the link to the survey we're doing here on the 440 Podcast Network. Just five minutes. The, all the survey. He's holding you at gunpoint to do the same. Fill it out. He's got your family. He's got them captive. Uh, we would really appreciate it if you guys would fill that out. It takes five minutes. The answers are private. We won't see who says what. We just, we're trying to make a better product for you here on the 440 Podcast Network. And we can only do that if you tell us what you want. So go over there. Do that for us. Until then, for producer JT, I'm your host, Easton Freeze. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you then.